and I turn out to be a fucking gangster. Is Dwight Manfredi reconsidering his gangster lifestyle? At the end of the episode, Dwight engaged in a conversation with Mitch at the Bread 2 Buck, potentially causing another disruption in Tulsa King Season 2. During that conversation, Dwight shared a number of regrets, including his inability to control his emotions, his constant search for danger, and his lack of desire to become a gangster as a young man. Mitch then gently referred to Dwight as a seeker, anticipating that once he achieved his desired goals, he would relentlessly pursue the next best opportunity. That chat seemed to suggest Dwight was thinking about changing his mafia way of life. If Dwight indeed harbors doubts about his status as a mobster, there are several ways it could manifest, I given his stated intentions in Tulsa King Season 2, it's possible that Dwight could transition into a more legitimate role. Legit. Most of his plans, including the wind farm, auto dealership, and pot dispensary, are essentially legal. Once he establishes these plans, he could follow Cal Thresher's path and leave his criminal past behind. Instead, he might feel compelled to continue on his gangster path. So far, he has developed quite a few adversaries. They most certainly won't let him go straight without conflict. Why are Donnie's GM licenses so crucially important in Tulsa King Season 2, Episode 4? Mitch and Dwight visited Donnie Shore, the secondhand car salesman from whom they bought catalytic converters. Mitch had persuaded Donnie to sell the dealership to Dwight at the end of Tulsa King Season 2, Episode 2. The gangsters were there to negotiate. Eventually, they agreed to Donnie's pricing, but one somewhat perplexing element of the agreement was Donnie's General Motors licenses. As he clarified, Donnie possessed licenses that allowed him to sell GM items in perpetuity, which would be transferred to Dwight upon dealership purchase. Donnie also stated that the licenses were the reason for his high asking price, although the exact reason for their high cost remains unclear. With the GM licenses, Dwight is now able to market any GM product, including Chevy, Cadillac, GMC, and Buick cars, along with all of their components, OnStar navigation, and safety systems. Usually, the license to sell those goods would be somewhat costly, but Donnie's arrangement probably put them at a fraction of the price. Dwight and Mitch will have a large inventory catalog and spend almost less on license renewals than other dealerships would have to pay. Not only did the licenses work at Donnie's dealership, but they also worked anywhere else Dwight wanted to open a shop. Dwight won't have to pay additional licensing fees, as he may eventually open another dealership or even a repair facility that orders GMC components. For a larger initial payment, Dwight can now make far more money down the road, essentially the reverse of his agreement with MedHat. Another significant advantage is Dwight's ability to convince Donnie to stay for a few months, allowing him to mentor Mitch and facilitate the transfer. 